Well, I'm glad to see so many people came back. I thought after last night, <laughs> we might not have too many people. <laughs> I think that's the first time I ever got up and said that if you don't like this, you don't want to come back the rest of the week. So, but I'm glad you came back. How many of you were new? You were not here last night. I couldn't see everybody's hand. Quite a few. Praise God. Welcome. Let me just say that last night we had three people receive salvation. We had, uh, we had 73 receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we had a lot of healings. Uh, I introduced one lady, Deborah, last night who I prayed with her before the service and she was paralyzed from a stroke and was able to move me and she got a little bit excited. But she was totally set free from paralysis and was able to lift her hands and stuff. And we had back pain healed, neck pain, ringing in the ears, blurry vision, cataracts, ear pain, uh, limp in legs, stomach pain, shoulder pain breathing issues, bladder. I, I'm not sure it was fixed right at that moment, but uh, and sciatic pain, heart issues, shoulder popping, leg pain. We had a lot of great things happen. And anyway, it was just awesome. And for those of you that were not here, the majority of all of that happened through our prayer ministers. We have people up here before and after every service, and we want to encourage you to please take advantage of them one of the things we're trying to do is to show people that it's not just one or two people in the body of Christ that have the power of God. Believers will lay hands on the sick. And all of this happened through our prayer ministers, so we want to encourage you to take advantage of that. That'll be awesome. Praise God. We're going to have uh, Greg Fritz come up and minister to us this morning. Come on up, Greg. How many of you... How many of you know Greg Fritz, Greg and Carol? Well, a few of most of your stuff is new. It's going to be new. Amen. <laughs> anyway, Greg and Carol are from Tulsa. He's a Rama grad. And Greg has been traveling and ministering for how many years? 32 years. 32 years. And he's just been a special friend to us. Actually, one of the times during the transition in uh, Karis Bible College, I, I called Greg and asked him if he'd... Uh, what he'd think about taking over Karis and running Karis for us. And he had enough wisdom to pray about it and said he didn't feel like that's what God told him to do. But that's how much I value him and his ministry. He is an awesome, awesome minister, and I think you're going to be blessed. So give us heaven, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 Wow, it's great to be here today. Aren't you glad to be in this meeting? Woo. I'll tell you, these... Brings back memories of camp meetings and uh, the, just the moves of God. It's just great to be in a place on a Thursday, Friday. Don't you feel like you're just doing something radical to be here today? It's Friday. It feels like, you know, th this place is already giddy. Usually it takes a couple of meetings. And after Andrew's message last night, I'm surprised anybody came back. <laughs> I'm going to try to lighten the mood a little bit. I'm not going to call you names. I'm not going to tell you how selfish you are. I know some people that need that book, but uh, anyway. No, I'm so glad to be here, and uh, we love this ministry. And when I started coming to Caris, it was very small. There was about 50 students, and just to watch this ministry grow over the years has been one of the highlights. It's been very special for me. For years, people would ask me traveling, what do you see God doing? What's God doing? And so, well, you know, I don't know about the whole world, but I'll tell you one thing. In Colorado, there's a Bible school that is really, really growing. The power of God, the favor of God's on it, and uh, it's expanding all over the world. And I've had the privilege of teaching at Karis Bible Colleges around the world all over the United States, and uh, that same DNA that's up in Colorado Springs, Woodland Park, is in all the schools, the same DNA that's in this room, and I just can't uh, recommend it any higher. Uh, if I was going to go to Bible school, there's no question. And I, I want to thank Andrew for building that college. What a, what a work. I mean, a life's work. But what that's done for us, for, for the rest of us that are much younger, 
is f- for the rest of my ministry, I'm going to have a place to send people that need to go to Bible class. I know just the place for them. And if you're considering college, I want to uh, just reiterate, you can start right here in Atlanta. You know, I've been to this college nine times. I was looking at it. I've spoken here nine years. And uh, the, the, the Bible school here is just excellent. They, all of them are, and you can get your foot in here, and then you can end up in Woodland Park. It's just, there's just so many ways to do it, so I highly recommend that you, uh, that you go to the meeting today. It sounds like it's worth going no matter what. They're going to be entertaining. So um, I'm going to give a few things away. Is that all right? I got an iPad here. I'm going to give an iPad away. To my wife, this is hers. Why don't you she might not like that. I might be popular if I did that. This is my wife, Carol. She came with us, and we're so happy to have her. And I might give a couple of things away here. Uh, we, let me just say this in the whole spirit of Bible school. We're going to have a quiz at the end of this session. So please pay attention and take notes because you will be graded. And if you do well, I'm going to give you a free gift. All right? So how's that? Uh, I've got a couple of books out there. One of these books, you know, somebody came to our table and wanted that book I wrote with Joyce Meyer. And it's like, what? It's this book. This is Charlie and Jill's book. And the foreword is by Joyce Meyer. Okay, she didn't write it with them. They wrote it and she wrote the foreword. So um, I I just don't want Charlie's people to be clogging up my table. So... (laughs) This is Charlie's book. These are my books. So I'm going to give away Charlie's book. And, and, and uh, no, I know them very well. And, and we've waited a long time for them to begin to publish things. And so uh, we got our, our book last night. So I'm going to, I am going to give this away when, when loss comes close to home. And the foreword is by Joyce Meyer and Andrew Womack. So uh, it's probably worth the price of the book just to read the forewords. So <laughs> the rest of it's bonus. So uh, who, who gives, y'all only give books away for, you, you'll do it for me? All right. Okay, and then there's a couple other things. Now, this is called Living in Stressful Times Without Losing Your Mind. And I think people could use this book today. L- living in Stressful Times Without Losing Your Mind. If you want to be happy again, you need this book. So uh, this is out there. And then this one's my first book's called Good News. It's so good, the bad news doesn't matter. And, and it's the truth. The good news just keeps getting better. So uh, this is on redemption. You don't have to run. Oh, I'm, I got this. Unless you want to. We don't have service like this in local churches. This is amazing. Wow. All right. And then this is a, a, a CD series. And it's also in USB, but it's called Understanding Faith. And, and I'm going to talk about faith today so you'll get more on this. But if you're interested, uh, this will really give you an overview of what faith is. And it's out there along with some other faith products. This is a good time to live by faith. Can you say amen to that? Man, there's never been a better time to live by faith and walk by faith. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to begin to share here in just a second. But uh, I do want to say... To thank you to Andrew. It's just an honor to be here. And, and uh, we, I don't know whether to give him credit or blame him for my life the last five years. But since I went on Gospel Truth TV, everything's changed for me. And we have been working very, very hard on all of the things that go with the media type ministry. And, uh, and they have just been, he's been such an inspiration, such a friend. In fact, I was talking to him not long ago, and I, I said, man, we, our friend list is getting short. <laughs> and I don't know if we're just busy or we're just in a different place. And, and he said, well, Jamie and I are your friends. And I thought, well, you know what? There's something right there. I, I'll take that. Do you still mean that? Or we're still good? I'll take it. <laughs> I got friends. But I, I appreciate it, and thank you for allowing me to be here. And I have to say this, I've never been able to do this publicly, but I'm going to do it today, and you're just going to have to, in fact, don't even take this off my time. I want to recognize Billy and Becky Epperhart, who's sitting right here on the front row. And he is CEO of Andrew Womack Ministries, and he wears a lot of hats. But I'll tell you, uh, we go back a long way, and Billy's been, they have been such a friend to me and my wife. And so, uh, 
You know, I used to preach for him when he pastored. He's had like three lives, four lives. <laughs> and so he pastored. And, and uh, I would go visit him and he tried to get me to move to Denver and I never would. And, uh, but, but, you know, what a blessing. I thought, you know, whenever I'd go to places and not be appreciated like I thought I should be, I thought, well, Billy wants me. <laughs> oh, something. Billy wants me. Who can say that? Billy wanted to move to Denver. So he was about 60, if I get this right. And, and I went to see him and he, he said, I just graduated business school from one of the best business school. He, he got his master's in business, one of the best schools in the country. And he's 60 years old. He'd already made a fortune and pastored. And I said, why'd you do that? He goes, I just always wanted it. I thought, well, that's not a reason. I mean, I've always <laughs> wanted things too. I've always wanted to go to the moon, but I mean, that's not... But not long after that, he, he took the role at Andrew Womack Ministries. And I'll tell you, these two are a dynamic duo. I mean, when you put the two together, it's powerful. And it's been amazing to watch. Because uh, I knew both of them before they knew each other. In fact, I'm the common denominator in this entire building. I, I'm the missing link. So, but anyway, uh, thank you, Billy and Becky, for loving us, being friends to us, and we're, we're inspired to watch what God's doing in your lives. You're an inspiration. Amen. And, uh, and Ashley and Carly are here. They, we love them, friends for life. I mean, they're never going to go off my friends list. So thank you for being here, and uh, they love this ministry also. And on the front row here is lots of executives from the ministry. And they are wise, they are intelligent, they know things. If you have a problem or you want to ask a theological question or have a problem with anything I might say or do, ask them. They, they will, they've got the answers. Just, in fact, Mike's right here. Just go to straight to Mike. Just go straight to Mike and he will work it out. That's what he does. So if you got any compliments... Nice things to say, I'm always open. My, my door is always open. Why don't you stand up with me? Let's get into this. And I'll tell you what, that sermon last night was, uh, I can't wait for the rest of it. How about, how about you? The Philippians, we're going to go through verse by verse. Um, that, that was powerful. And uh, so, and Andrew will be up in just a few minutes if I don't go too long. Wait, where's my timer? It says zero. <laughs> Am I done? No, I'm not. It's great to be with you. <laughs> Came a long way for that. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Speak to us today. Lead us and guide us into your truths. Open our hearts and minds. Answer questions today. Meet needs and, and, and just be glorified in our midst. And we will give you all the glory and all the praise and all the honor. I pray that lives would be changed this weekend, that, that, that people would see things differently, that they get their vision back, their joy back, that they, they would walk with a new sense of purpose uh, because we've come together in Jesus' name here this weekend. We give you the praise and glory for it. And everyone said, amen, amen. You could be seated. And uh, I want to talk to you about faith, and uh, we'll just kind of introduce this today. And I want to make this statement, God likes faith. God likes faith a lot more than people like faith. When we live and move in this world, we don't really want to interact by faith. If I uh, hire an employee, I don't want them to show up by faith. I want them there. When you go to a, a bank to get a loan, you don't do it by faith. They want collateral. They want a proof. And... Uh, when you get paid on Friday, so you don't want a faith check, you want a real check with real money. So when, when we deal in the natural, we trust but verify. But when you're dealing with an invisible God that cannot be seen or felt, if you're going to interact with God, you're going to have to do it by faith. That's how we access God and God's blessings. So God likes faith. In fact, he even said... Uh, in Hebrews eleven six, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So uh, we, we, can, we can't even come to God unless we believe that he is. When you go to your 
room and bow your head and pray, that is an act of faith. That is saying, God, I believe you're there even though I can't see you and I can't feel you. I believe you're there. And so this pleases God. He's chosen to remain invisible in this dispensation. That was his choice. He wanted to do it that way. And one of the reasons I think God wanted to do it that way is so that he could be found by those that want to find him. Can you imagine how different the world would be if God was just visible all the time? I mean, it would just scare people to, to, to submission. I mean, if God just manifested his glory all over the world, everybody would surrender whether they wanted to or not. And God didn't want it that way. He wanted people to seek him and find him. He wanted people to search for him and want him and, because he does want us. But it's very important to God that you want him. And he doesn't want to force it or coerce you or intimidate you. In fact, if you want to live your whole life as if there is no God, even though he created the world, even though he made everything in it, you're breathing his air, you're drinking his water, you're enjoying his sunshine. But if you want to live your life like there is no God, he won't interrupt you. That is amazing restraint. That would not be the case in my world. In my world, you want to drink my water and breathe my air and ignore me? I don't think so. <laughs> it's not going to rain on your house. <laughs> you will never experience sunshine. You will never experience pleasure. I mean, but God will let people live their lives. So it's up to us as people, human beings, to search for God. And when we find God, find out what does he want? Well, he likes faith. And you know, that's a good thing because we can do that. And I'm going to explain to you how well, we, how, how well we can do it and how good we are at it. And I think this is going to begin to take form. And tonight, uh, we are going to receive from God, possibly like you never have before. We're going to dissect the prayer of faith and when you come to, I believe this place is going to be so full of faith. By the time you come forward tonight, it's just going to be electric. You're going to receive your miracle, your answer, your need. You're going to get your life back. And I don't know about you, but there's just something in me. When I look at the news and the way the world is going, something rises up and says, enough is enough. I'm not going to put my life on pause until the world gets their act together. The clock's ticking. I'm going to live my life. You know what? You have a right to be here. You didn't ask to be born. God created you and put you here for a purpose. And you can fulfill that purpose. You can be what God said you would be. You can do what God said you could do. God's plans have not changed. They don't change with the news cycle. They don't change with the economy. They don't change. We don't have to be so reactive to the things of the world. We can do what God's called us to do, but we've got to learn to walk by faith, not by sight. Sights and sounds are getting more and more frightening and intimidating, but faith does not change. God's promise does not change. God himself does not change. Let me read this and then we'll get into this. Hebrews eleven thirty three says this. It talk, it's talking about the heroes of faith, different men and women uh, uh, throughout history that have believed and, and it says this in verse 33, who through faith subdued kingdoms. Now, since faith is the subject here, I'm just going to use it before each of these. Through faith, they subdued kingdoms. Through faith, they worked righteousness. Through faith, they obtained promises. Through faith, they stopped the mouths of lions. Through faith, they quenched the violence of fire. Through faith, they escaped the edge of the sword. Through faith, out of weakness, they were made strong. Through faith, they became valiant in battle. Through faith, they turned to flight the armies of aliens. It didn't matter what the problem was, what the opposition was, what the challenge was, the answer was always, we're going to face this with faith in God. We're going to face it down in the name of Jesus by faith in almighty God who has made the promises so that we could believe them. There's a whole lo a long way to go once you believe that there's a God. How many of you know that's just the doorway? There's so much more to believe about God and in God than that, but that's step one. How many of you have taken that step and you've already... And, and, you, and you did it effortlessly. I mean, you're not straining and struggling right now, are you, to believe there's a God? There is a God. In fact, I could have a, a, a scientist come up here and give you a thousand reasons why there's no God, and it wouldn't even shake your faith at all, would it? 
No, because you're a believer. Everybody say, I'm a believer. This is what we do. We're good at it. We believe things. We believe the promises of God. So let me just say this. Uh, God likes faith, number one, because God is a faith God. Did you know God operates in faith? In fact, the Bible says it was by faith that he created the world. When he spoke the world into existence, he did it by faith. So he's not asking us to do something that he isn't doing or won't do. God likes the way of faith. He likes this exchange of faith. He spoke the worlds into existence by faith. There's a few scriptures on this, Hebrews 11:3. 3. By faith, we understand the worlds were framed by the word of God. In Psalm 33, 6, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. And verse uh, 9, it says, for he spoke and it was done. He commanded and it, st and, and it stood fast. We need to get familiar with the laws of faith, the principles of faith, because they work for anyone that works them or works with them. And it's not works. Faith is not works. Paul made that clear. However, it is specific and it is important that we, uh, we, that we recognize the principles of faith. Another time where God used faith is when he came to an old, old man and said, I'm going to give you a, a son. I'm going to make you the father of many nations. In fact, he said, I have made you the father of many nations. He didn't say, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Now, Abraham was old, 75 to 99 years old. And God said, I made you the father of many nations, not future tense, but pre past tense. And I often say this, if God could call an old man with no kids, the father of many nations, you can call yourself blessed. Amen. You can call yourself wise. You can call yourself healed. You say, well, I don't look healed. I don't feel healed. Well, if God could call an old man with no kids, uh, the father of many nations, you could call yourself obedient. You can call yourself successful. You can call yourself highly favored. Amen. And one of the reasons that people struggle is they're not calling themselves blessed. They're calling themselves cursed. And then they wonder, why is it not working for me? Well, it is. <laughs> it's working all right. <laughs> Some people think that the Word of Faith movement or message came from Tulsa, from Kenneth Hagin. But it really didn't. It started in Mark 11 with the life of Jesus. People come to you and say, you know, that word and confession stuff, that confession of faith doesn't work. Ask them, do you really believe that? Yes, I believe it doesn't work for me. It's working. That's exactly what's happening. Turn to Mark chapter 11 and let's look at where this all began, at least in the New Testament. Mark chapter 11 and uh, Jesus was out with his disciples, constantly teaching, training them, showing them things. And, and uh, in, in verse, uh, he walked up to a fig tree, uh, verse 13, seeing a, a fig tree afar having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he could find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. I guess he was hungry. Maybe hangry. <laughs> and so whatever the case, he cursed his fig tree and then they went on. Well, then if you drop on down to ver verse 20, it says, Now in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. So Jesus was operating in faith. The same type of faith and speaking that God used to create the universe, Jesus just demonstrated it once again in front of the disciples. And uh, it was an object lesson. He spoke to this tree. And in verse 20, Now in the morning as they passed by the fig tree, they saw that it was dried up by the roots. And Peter, remembering, said, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. Now, this would have been a good time for Jesus to say, I told you I was the Messiah. Don't you ever doubt me again, Peter, or you're next. <laughs> what I say happens. So just get in line. I, don't, I haven't liked the way you've been acting lately. Straighten up. 
But that's not what Jesus said. In fact, Jesus always did this. He always brought us along. He didn't come here to show us how great he was. He came here to show us how to live life. He showed us how to believe God. He showed us how to love. He showed us how to heal and and reach people. And this is no exception. He says, look, guys, you're impressed because I spoke to that tree as if only God could do something like that, as if, as if I did something that's unusual and unheard of. And he said, uh, he said let, me, let me give you a little object lesson here. He, he's looking around and he sees this mountain, probably the biggest thing he could find. And he goes, you, you see that mountain over there? You think that's something? If you, whosoever, says to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart. He shall have, what was he saying? He's saying, God, you can do this. This isn't something I did just to prove anything. You could do this. This is faith in action. This is the word of faith. This will work for you. Now, obviously, he's, this is symbolic. He's not talking about moving mountains around and, tree, and killing trees. That, that's not that useful. Actually, there's a couple trees I could think of that it might be but normally that's not what your problem is your mountain represents your problem the things you're facing and he's saying you can change your world by faith in your heart and words in your mouth just like I did in fact he said whosoever you know what that means all of us can do this so so God practiced faith he, he did it himself, but his desire was that we would follow him in this process, that we too would live the life of faith, speak the word of faith, and he's really encouraging us to get started. I'll tell you, your, your whole attitude can change when you begin to walk by faith, looking at things that, are, that, that, that can't be seen, begin to get your signal from heaven and not the local news. Are you ready to get off the roller coaster of good news, bad news, or bad news, worse news? Are you ready to stop watching and, and looking? I, I tell you, I see Christians all the time that are just looking for a glimpse of hope. They want some preacher, some prophet, just tell me things are going to be okay. Listen, we got a whole book full of promises and you can focus your faith on that and I can give you a word right now you're blessed and and greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world and this is the victory that overcomes the world even your faith you're going to make it you're going to overcome things have not changed in your life God hasn't changed his mind about you He's not changed at all since all of these things have uh, yes there's more pressure there's more, there's more going on in the world today. It's more intimidating. It's more anti-Christian. I mean, you'd, be, you'd have to be blind not to see that. But, but that doesn't mean we can't do the will of God. I mean, I don't hear Andrew backing off at all. They want to raise a billion dollars. Have you seen the economy lately? You, and people are getting squeezed and they're going to raise a billion dollars. I tell you, you know... I, I taught at the school when it was down in Colorado Springs and, and they were planning to build it up in Woodland Park. And, and there was a lot of people around at the time said, it's never going to work up there. There's no housing. People don't want to drive up there. And the employees aren't even going to stay with it. There was, I, I, you probably didn't hear any of that. <laughs> and so, you know, I said, you know what? Don't bet against Andrew Womack. I said, I wouldn't bet against Andrew Womack. He left Lamar, Colorado, went to Colorado Springs and got on the radio. And I would have bet anything at that time. He'll never make it on radio. But look at what's happened. So they built this college and and now they're going to raise a billion dollars. I'll tell you one thing. After what they did in Woodland Park, if Andrew said he's going to build a college on Mars, I would give the first thousand dollars. Count me and we're doing it. And then we'll get Billy to build housing (laughs) on Mars. We shouldn't let current events affect our faith. It doesn't change God and it didn't change the promises of God. And if we'll focus on that, then we don't change. I tell you, we need to get an attitude. You belong here. And the world has had the floor long enough to tell us that we're unimportant, that we're interrupting something here. And if it wasn't for human beings, the world would be a beautiful, wonderful, harmonious place. You filthy humans. 
It's like, I take exception. Have you seen the animal kingdom? They do not get along. It's not my fault. And lions are killing things. I didn't do that. We're supposed to be here. We're supposed to live life and do the will of God in our life. This whole thing was made so that man would have a place. Mankind, humankind would have a place to live and, and, and find this invisible God by faith. Man, my job would be so much easier if God would just appear. It, altar calls would be so powerful. You say, folks, I want you to meet God. Poof, and there's God. I'm going to invite everyone that wants to meet God to come right on for Man, there'd be a line out the door. You could just meet him, and then afterward we could pray this prayer. It would be so easy. But we're constantly preaching about a God that can't be seen. We're talking about truths that can't be perceived with the natural senses. The only way to get this is by faith. But that's okay. That's a good thing. God likes faith because, number one, he's a faith God. Number two... He wants to give you things that you don't deserve. Isn't that powerful? God has devised this method for our benefit. It's not to keep things from us. It's to get things to us. And, and so he, he, he's provided all things. Jesus came and purchased everything so that we could be blessed with all spiritual blessings so that all these things could be ours. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So the Bible talks about all things that pertain to life and godliness. All these things are available to you. All of these things that you can't pay for that you can. I'm glad God didn't wait until we can earn eternal life. Or he didn't say, I'm going to give you eternal life, you're going to have to pay me back. How long is that going to take? Oh, you know, eternity. You're going to be in debt for a long time. We couldn't pay for these things. So rather than God waiting for us to earn them or deserve them or, or, or accumulate some kind of value, he just sent Jesus and Jesus just did it. He defeated all of our mortal enemies. He got back everything that sin had robbed from us. And then he just said, it's free. What? Yes, it's free. It's free. So everybody can have everything. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. But guess what? You only get as much grace as you believe for. Isn't that amazing? It's like it's all free, but like I've had people come tell me, usually it's Baptist, um, you know, <laughs> I don't believe in that Holy Spirit. I don't believe in that speaking in tongues. And you just tell them, you'll never have to worry about it. You'll, you'll never have to worry about it. Why? Because you won't get it that way. That's not how you get it. it. You never saw anybody walking down the street and all of a sudden God just saved them. Bing, you're saved. Why? Because that's not how it comes. It, you're, you're saved through, by grace through faith. You, you decide to receive from God. You decide what you receive. In fact, you decide when you receive. You decide what and you decide when. And God won't override your will and put things on you that you don't want. He doesn't intrude in our life. Have you ever figured that out? God doesn't intrude in our lives. He doesn't interrupt our lives. He will give you space until you believe. And boy, the minute you believe, he there with that answer, with that manifestation. So we, it, it's, it's so important to understand the principle of Jesus paid for it all and we get what we believe for. There's a scripture, uh, Romans chapter 4. And let me just read this to you. Verse 16, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. So that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only those who are of the law, but those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. So it's a faith that it might be by grace. So these two work together. You heard the, 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 the book, The Balance of Faith and Grace. You can get that. And it's so important to understand that God did his part. He provided all these things, but it's up to us to respond in faith and by faith. This is so important because faith makes it fair. 
In fact, it explains so many things about the kingdom of God that may be hard to understand otherwise. If two people come to a service, both unsaved, they sit through the service, and after the service, one leaves saved and the other leaves unsaved, why do you think that is? Did God love one of them more than the other? Did, did one of them suffer longer than the other and, and it was his time or their time? Did God draw names and said, you know, it's your turn. Now you're going to, no, one of them believed and the other didn't. And that's why Jesus said in Mark 4, be careful how you hear because there'll be those that hear and more will be given. There'll be others that don't hear and they'll just, lo they'll lose what they have. That doesn't sound fair, does it? Until you understand faith. And what he's saying is, if you learn how to hear the word of God and believe it, there's no limit to what you can get. But if you don't learn how to walk by faith, you're going to have a hard time holding on to what you have. You're not going to have the shield of faith to resist the attacks of the enemy. And that's what happens to people that get saved constantly over and over and over and over. They think they do because their, their faith is not strong. They don't understand how to keep it, how to be secure in the promises of God. They haven't learned this process of faith. Thank God for the ability to believe in God. You know, the world really doesn't take advantage of this option, but we can. And if you believe in God and you believe in the word of God and you're filled with the Holy Spirit today, you're ready to live modern life. You're ready to be here in 2024, 23, 24, whenever it is. You're ready to face the challenges that the world would throw because, uh, because, because you've got the promises of God. You know, we don't have a less, less quality faith than anyone else had. We've got the same faith. We've got the same spirit of faith. We've got the same God and the same promises. How many of you are ready to live your life? Amen. Amen. So if you, you believe more, you can have more. I believe it's time to stretch our faith. I believe it's time to determine I'm going to believe God for more. You know, I love what Andrew said. He, he said he's 100% dependent on God. 100%. And it's true. It's amazing to see someone live their life that way. Whereas whatever happens, they just go to the word of God. They stand on the word of God. And they're happy when they shouldn't be. And that's why he, he has this saying, you know, you may think I'm weird. Have you ever heard him say that? You may think I'm weird, but you know what? I think you're weird. You know, it's, it's very, it's kind of off-putting and it's rude, but it's, it, it makes a point. <laughs> you know, um, I, he's really helped me because I grew up Methodist. That's why we're so nice. I mean, Methodist folks are nice. I don't, we never argue with anybody. It was the Baptist always fighting and get, get. And so, uh, but he's helping me be more blunt. That's, you know, so I'm trying. Anyway, so I was with him not long. Well, it was a few years ago and, and uh, he said, it happened to be on this day. And he, he said, uh, his CEO, it was before Billy. Uh, he said, my CEO called me and said, you know, I've owned businesses all over the world. And we have, correct me if I'm wrong, but he said, we put money in reserve. He said, I'll have six months budget in the bank or a year's budget in the bank or two years budget. He said, that's just good business. He said, Andrew, we got 12 hours left. <laughs> and this was in that 12 hour window. And Andrew says, I guess I'm just not like a lot of people because I said, Paul, praise God, we got 12 hours left. <laughs> what? <laughs> Most people would be planning their final meal, you know, I think <laughs> writing letters to their kids. I sure loved you. It's been nice knowing you. And if anything happens, I just, not Andrew. He had 12 hours left. Did y'all make it or? They made it. Here we are. <laughs> I'll tell you, we're missing out on so much. You know, they say that uh, Jesus said, all things are possible to those who believe. He didn't just say all things are possible. You know, all things are possible to those who believe. And I was thinking about how scientists say we only use 10% of our brain, you know, and, and some people much less. <laughs> but say 10% of, of the capability. But how much of our faith potential are we using? 
How many of you think we could do better at this? Listen, some of you, if you don't learn this, you're not going to be happy. You, you can't just wait until the world gets things. Some people are still waiting for things to go back to normal. They may not go back to normal. I don't know. I'm not a prophet. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm not going to wait till then to get happy. I'm not going to wait till then to live my life. I'm not going to wait till then to look forward to tomorrow. I'm not going to wait for then, until then uh, to, to do what I was put here to do. You belong here. And you have a right to provision and protection throughout your life. Until Jesus comes and we can finish our course with joy. How many of you believe that? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. And then finally, the third reason that people, that God likes faith, and, and this is probably the best one of all, is everyone can do it. It wouldn't have been pleasing to God to make his presence known only to certain ones. God wanted something everyone could do. That's why in 1 Corinthians 1, it says it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. Isn't that cool? In fact, we had said before that, it said in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. In other words, he's saying wisdom's not going to be the road to God. Why? I don't want to limit the God's accessibility to only the wise because some of us wouldn't have made it. You could say that money's not the road to God. Uh, that's not the, how you access God. No, it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe, because everybody can believe. Everybody say, I can believe. I can. So now you're going to have a test, so stay with me. <laughs> Anybody can believe. A child can believe. An older person can believe. Educated people can believe. Uneducated people, everybody can believe God. You know, I used to think that, you know, maybe certain people, I, I was shopping for a house one time and, and, uh, and I, I didn't buy it, but because of Zillow, you find out these houses are, so I went over and looked at it by myself, which I don't recommend, you know. So anyway, I'm walking around this house, it was vacant and the neighbor saw me, so the neighbor comes over and he starts telling me about the house and asking personal questions. The first question he asked was, what do you do? And I think he was thinking, you know, this guy may buy this house and be my neighbor. I want to find out who I'm dealing with. And so I said, uh, I said well, I don't want to talk about it. I just want to look at the house. And because uh, I didn't want to, you know. Anyway, if you tell people you're a preacher, it gets awkward a lot of times. <laughs> they either, you know, they either cuss to show you that they're not intimidated or, or they'll quote, misquote a scripture to show you how religious they are. <laughs> no, it happens all the time. Well, you know, the good Lord helps those who helps themselves like the good book said. No, the good book doesn't really. But anyway, I don't, you know, so anyway, I didn't want to tell him. But he, so he won. I thought, well, I may be his neighbor. So I said, I'm a preacher. And he goes, oh, I couldn't tell if that was a good O or bad O. So anyway, I kept on looking and he was sh sharing with me and we talked a little bit more about family, how many kids you have and all this and what your wife looked like and really personal and so uh at the end he says well I hope you get the house I said well I said uh I, I'd be happy to live in this neighborhood as long as you don't mind living next to a preacher he said well no no I don't have a problem at all as long as you don't mind living next to an atheist <laughs> an atheist I didn't know they existed in real life <laughs> I thought they were just in zoos you know behind glass I I mean, it's a real life atheist right there talking to me, an atheist. And, and he must have seen the shock and he goes, I'm a, I'm a scientist, therefore I'm an atheist. I thought, oh, okay. So I got in my car and I drove off and I never went back there again. And, but but, but it, never, it, it haunted me what he was saying, a scientist. So I thought, well, maybe scientists can't believe in God. Maybe they can't. And, and so I looked up science because I didn't know what that meant. And, and, and science is to come to a conclusion through observation or experimentation. So because they can't experiment, you know, and, 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 and create God, or, or they can't see him through a telescope or a microscope, then there's no God. And so I thought, well, but what about creation? How about the beginning? How do they justify that? Well, they believe in evolution. And I would love to go have a talk with my scientist friend now, my atheist scientist friend, because I have some questions to ask. 
Let's go back to in the beginning and to, you give me your version, I'll give you my version. My version is, is simple and it's in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. I don't know why the world has tried to make us embarrassed to say that, but I'm going to say it uh, till the day I die. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And they act like you're, 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 you're religious or weak-minded or in, un, un, unintelligent if you believe that and if you say that. But let's just go back. We're talking about faith here. We're still on subject. Let's go back to the beginning. You give me your version. You So I'm the, I'm the idiot. I'm the, I'm the unintelligent one. I'm not scientific. Okay, so experimentation, observation. Go ahead. There was nothing. Now what? <laughs> well, there was a big explosion. We call it the Big Bang. And through that, this uh, comes this cosmic goo. And over billions and billions of years, the non-living matter uh, spontaneously generated and produced a living cell. And it began to evolve. And here we are. <laughs> and I'm the idiot. <laughs> So I have this phrase. I'm going to post this soon. You may think that I'm naive to believe that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But the alternative is to believe that everything came from nothing for no reason. Which is more absurd? Don't insult my intelligence and call it science. Because it's not science. That's not science. They didn't, they didn't observe that, and they can't reproduce it. So it isn't science. You know what it is? It's faith. So scientists can believe. We should do a book on that. Scientists can believe. I believe, they believe. And you know what? My belief that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth makes more sense and answers more questions than theirs does. In fact, I'm surprised they haven't come up with something better over 100 years. It's, it's, that's the best they could come up with. I mean, I think I could do better than that if I put my mind to it. <laughs> that nothing, there was nothing and all of a sudden an explosion that can't be explained, it can't be duplicated, it can't be observed. It happened. Yeah. And then, and then you see him on TV do an interview. I saw one one time and they, and they dismiss God completely. And then they said, and they leaned across the table in this interview and said, what about aliens? <laughs> and the scientist leaned across the table and said, we just can't take that off the table yet. <laughs> oh, you can't take aliens off the table. You took God off the table. You can't take aliens off the table. I'll take aliens off the table. There, take them off the table. You took God off the table and there's evidence everywhere you look that there's a God. They don't have one alien fossil. They don't have one alien footprint. They don't want to have one alien spaceship. There is no natural proof of aliens. And yet, they'll tell you they're out there. We just haven't found them yet. You know what that is? That's faith. That's faith. You know why? Everyone can believe. Everyone does believe. Now you may, I'm not going to argue about aliens. I, you know what I've, my conclusion on aliens is inconsequential. Why? Because it's not in the Bible. So I don't care what they find or don't find. I don't care. And I can't see how putting my faith in aliens is going to change my life. Yeah. I mean, I've heard the radio programs of people late at night that believe in them. They don't seem normal to me. <laughs> I don't see how it's helped them. But I tell you what I have done, I've opened my Bible and I've mixed my faith with some promises in God's word and it's changed my life and it continues to change my life and it's changed my world. I'll take the Bible any day. Mix your faith with something that'll do, do you some good. You got faith, you just need to use it on the right thing. I got a little distracted there. I'm Without faith, it's impossible to please God. <laughs> you know what? I believe that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And you may think I'm weird. But you know what? 
I got this. Andrew thinks you're weird. This is easy. I can do this all day long. Andrew doesn't like that. You're selfish. <laughs> Andrew thinks you're selfish. I like you, but you know. <laughs> you know, I was on my houseboat one time with a bunch of, of unbelievers, non-believers, and they were, they were drinking and carrying on, but they were talking to the preacher. They wanted to come talk to the preacher. And I, they weren't used to a lot of religious talk, so it got a little deep pretty quick. And so I looked at the head ringleader and I said, you know what, Justin, Jesus loves you. And everybody's like, oh, I said, now I can't, I don't care much for you, but Jesus <laughs> loves you. And you know, that guy got saved. Yeah. You got to keep it real. God didn't set the bar too high. He said, if you want to come to me, believe that I am. In fact, in Jeremiah 33, he says, seek me and you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. That's my message to the atheist. You want to find God? Seek him. Pray to him and he will answer. Seek him and you'll find him if you search for him with all. I guarantee you they haven't done it. Why? Because the Bible says if you do that, you'll find him. I did it. I found him. How about you? They don't have to prove anything to me. I know there's a God. I found him. I sought him and I found him. If they would look for God as hard as they're looking for aliens, they would have found him by now. God is not hidden so that he can't be found. He's hidden to be found. Oh, my I'll tell you, we have the faith option, folks. Don't leave that out of your life. You didn't just get saved so you could hold on until Jesus comes. You don't need the U.S. government to give you permission to have a good life. You don't need the economy to be at a certain level for you to succeed and thrive. You can believe the promises God made to you. And if you're believing for things that haven't come to pass yet, join the club. We're all believing for If you, you've quit living, if you're not believing for things that haven't happened, if you're not holding, it's like a football. If God gives you that promise and says, hold on to this now. Everything in the world is going to try to take it away from him, but you hold on to this and you make progress and you will cross the goal line before it's said and done. Thank God for faith. I pr appreciate promises from God that you can hold on to and believe day in and day out. He gives you something to live for. We ought to just be thankful we're not Noah. Think about the promise he had. Noah, this is God. I'm going to make you a promise. Yay! What is it, God? In a hundred years, I'm going to judge the world, destroy them. I want you to go tell them. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to send judgment in the form of rain. He goes, well, what's rain? It's going to, water's going to come down and it's going to flood the earth. And, and Noah believed that and was a preacher of righteousness for a hundred years. We got it easy compared. We get to preach good news. We get to tell people God loves them, that Jesus died for them, that their sins can be, wow. Thank God for the new covenant. Amen. I'm so glad to be part of that. <laughs> Are you ready for your quiz? I had a guy come to me the other day and brought his six-year-old and nine-year-old boys and they came up and said, my boys listen to your program every night. And I thought, I have done my job. <laughs> or maybe I'm just childish, but I appreciate that. I'm going to give you a faith test and see if you pass. And then I'm going to give you an assignment. And we're going to complete that tonight. Are you ready? This is Bible school already. Let me ask you this. Question number one. How many of you believe there is a God? You believe that. And if I had a scientist come and tell you why there isn't one, would it affect you at all? No, because it's not based on logic or facts and figures. It's faith and it's of the heart. And you are convinced there is a God. Do you get up every morning and think, I hope I can believe there's a God all day today? 
No. If you have a bad day, do you doubt the presence that there is a God? Or, or it's unaffected. That's faith, folks. This is faith. I'm telling you, everybody can do this. All right, how many of you believe he had a son and his name was Jesus? How many of you believe he came to the earth 2,000 years ago and lived on this planet? Were you there? Did you see him? Do you know anybody that was there? Do you know the 12? No. And yet you believe. How many of you believe he died on a cross? Were you there? Do you have a fragment of the old rugged cross? There's no proof. You have no natural proof that that actually happened. How many of you believe he died and he was buried and God raised him from the dead? How many of you believe that? You're doing pretty good so far. I didn't think y'all would make it this far. How many of you have accepted Jesus as Lord and your sins, you know your sins are forgiven. You, you know it. Now, let's take, now, this may thin the crowd. How many of you believe that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Now, have you seen that book? Are you absolutely certain your name is there? Did you write it there? But you, you believe it's there? Okay, this is a tough crowd. I, I, let's go forward. How many of you believe in a place called heaven? You ever been there? You know where it is? If I was going to ask you to point, where would you point? What about people in China? Where would they point? <laughs> you know the earth is round. You don't know where it is. If I gave you a spaceship full of fuel, could you navigate to heaven? This heaven, this city of heaven. But you believe that when your body dies, you're going to go there. It's getting crazier. You probably believe you got a house there. In heaven, a city where you don't know where it is and you don't know how to get there. You probably believe you got a house in heaven. Like a wood cabin or? Oh, of course, a mansion. Why not? Sure. A mansion in heaven. Yes, you sure you do. Do you realize how crazy this sounds? And you probably believe that the streets, sure, they're made out of gold. Oh, yeah. You don't even hesitate to say this you don't even you're not even embarrassed <laughs> gates of pearl streets of gold mansions a river of life running through the street you believe all that and you and it, does it strain you to do this you know there's only one word for you people <laughs> andrew thinks <laughs> no <laughs> The word of the day is, you're believers. This is what you do. And you're really good at it. You believe all about God. Now, I talked about things that were past and things that were future. Let me just encourage you to do this. Let's focus our faith today on things that are right here, right now. You've already proven you're good at believing. Let's believe God. Get your peace back. Say enough is enough. I'm getting my life back. I'm getting my joy back. I'm going to get my vision back. I'm going to get my healing back. I'm going to get my finances back. I'm going to focus my faith on some things here and now so that I can overcome in this life because faith works here also. In fact, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So tonight, it's... Uh, by the way, you all passed the test, 100%. You get A's. Everyone gets an A. Tonight, I'm going to talk about the prayer of faith. We're going to dissect it. I'm going to try to help you uh, release your faith in ways that maybe you haven't before. Because let me just give you a short preview. Is that okay? A short preview. And that is this. A, a lot of people are ready to pray. And almost everyone's ready to receive. But to do this... In between, you have to believe you receive when you pray. And sometimes that takes a little preparation. People rush through that. They think they're doing it. But we're going to look at it. And I, I want to get you to a place tonight where you're ready to come forward 
and believe you receive when you pray and get your answer. How many of you believe that can happen in this place tonight? Oh, it's going to happen. I promise you it will. Amen. So I have this series called God Likes Faith. And, and this, is, this is what I'm going to give away. And this, is just a, this is a CD series, but what we have, we have it in uh, MP3 downloads. That means you can go to my website and download that series to your computer. It's a $16 value. All you need is this card. And on the back of this card is a code. You can scratch that off, the scratch off card, and enter that code, and you can have this free of charge uh, as my gift to you. I just ask that you fill out one of these. This is a download card, a free download card form, and uh, you'll put your name and address on here. And you, yes, you will be on my mailing list, but that's where you want to be. <laughs> but in exchange for that, you're going to get this, this ser- the entire series, God Likes Faith, And I'll tell you, the more you understand faith, the more you'll like it too. Faith works. God works. Amen. He can be trusted. Would you stand? Now it says zero, and I think that's accurate. (laughs) Oops. Everybody say, I'm a believer. I'm I'm not a doubter. I'm an overcomer. I'm a winner. I have all that God says I have. I can do whatever God says I can do. I'm full of love. I'm full of faith. I live a life of victory and prosperity and healing in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen.